What is up everybody? Welcome back to Tree Spice and uh, this is a continuation of uh, last week's video. If you saw last week's video, you saw that I got to visit Arb Session recently and brake test some of my gear in person. It was a lot of fun. I have only ever watched videos of brake tests before so to get to brake test some of my own gear, it was it was a great time. So if you haven't seen that video, go check that out. And uh, today we will be talking about two of the splices that showed up in that video. Now, all of the splices that I tested except for one are Kern Mantle uh, ropes. And they were kind of experimental splices that I've tried. I've seen them done by other people, but since there's no manufacturer recommendations for any of the ropes that I'll be talking about, uh, I just kind of uh, had to cobble together what information that I could gather. And because of that, obviously, I didn't super trust these, so I wanted to have them tested before I would ever use them in any of my life support applications. So uh, the two ropes that we got here today are Samson Mercury and Sterling H HTP. This is a 10 mil uh, size HTP. Now uh, the way that these are spliced, the method that was used is the Teufelberger splife method that's used for uh, Teufelberger adrenal line. I just adapted it to be used on these splices. Uh, now, if you're not familiar with that uh, splice, uh, you can. I'll include a link in the video to where you can either find, just go through the instructions and read about it if you want some more in-depth explanation because this uh, video will kind of rely on how these are actually spliced. But uh, watch a little bit, either watch that before this or if you're already familiar with it, I'll go over briefly how these are spliced too. But before we get to any of that, let's see how these splices do. So I'll just roll those uh, brake test videos again real quick and we'll discuss those uh, braking strengths. So there it was, pretty exciting to watch this stuff get uh, brake tested. Now, uh, when it comes down to their final strength, the Sterling HCP broke at 2,700 pounds. The Samson Mercury broke at uh, 4,900 pounds. So what does that mean? How do these compare? I didn't break a adrenal line splice like this because the splice I did is on a short rope that I have and I didn't want to make that rope any shorter. I like it at that length for pruning crab apple trees and stuff. So, uh, you know, shorter trees. So I didn't want to shorten it anymore. So I looked up a uh, brake test of actually Teufelberger Splife Drenaline, and that broke at uh, 4,600 pounds. So pretty good uh, compared to the Samson Mercury. Uh, uh, the Drenaline has a MBS of 7,800 pounds, so that's 58% strength retention. And uh, the Samson Mer Mercury has a braking uh, or a MBS of uh, 8,200 pounds probably like the strongest Kern Mantle that you can get in this size, I guess, that isn't class two fibers. Uh, so that was 59% uh, strength retention, so that's pretty good, but the Sterling had 45% strength retention, so this, this bad boy needs some help. Uh, this fella needs a little bit more something something to make it a bit stronger. But uh, with regard to that, I mean, I'm not super happy with those results. I mean, this one performed the same as the Adrenal Line but uh, I would maybe move away or change this, want to change this splice because I would like something that gets either closer to the MBS of the rope or at least hits the ANSI sea uh, standard of 5,400 pounds. I would feel a lot safer climbing on it at that. For a double, uh, for, uh, I mean, usually you're only splicing it usually for uh, double rope climbing, but uh, when you're double rope climbing, the eye is only being loaded with half your weight, so technically the whole system would likely fail. I mean, the hitch cord would fail before anything else and start slipping, but it would theoretically fail uh, still at above 5,400 pounds since the splice is only taking half the weight. So half the weight at 4,600 pounds or 2,700 pounds is still going to get you over the 5,400 pounds in theory. But I like switching over to single rope, so I want these to be as close to MBS as possible. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about splice construction. Why, why aren't we seeing MBS with this type of splice? We're seeing it break in the crossover area. Now, uh, yeah, like I said, if you're not 
familiar with this splice, I'll leave a link in the description where you can either look over how this splice is made quickly or Teufelberger also has a really nice uh, YouTube video for how to do this splice. So uh, you can watch that and come back here if, you're, if you don't know much about how this works. Otherwise, just a simple, quick explanation of how it works. So uh, the little legend here is just that the, uh, or the uh, purple part is the cover and the uh, black details are the cores. So an adrenal line splice, it's basically just a simple back splice. So you have uh, five core pieces, 55% of the core is pulled out here at mark C and then it's just tapered and pulled back through at the end kind of. And then so you have four remaining cores. Those come in, they come around the eye, and then the cover is tapered coming out, and then the cores are pulled out in intervals and tapered, and then it's all sucked through and you close up the eye, the cover comes out at mark D, and so the, uh, the back splice is supposed to overlap with the cores coming out between D and C. I used the Teufelberger formula and just turned that into a ratio system for deciding how many core strands to remove from these ropes and how many cover strands to remove from these ropes. For example, with the Samson Mercury, uh, this has, uh, these are a little bit different because the Teufelberger is a single strand braid whereas these are a dual strand braid, which I like a lot more because it makes the rope a lot more durable. Basically what it means is this rope has 32 strands, just like the uh, just like the Teufelberger Adrenal Line, but it is braided in, uh, in 16, uh, 16 different carriers, I guess, is what you maybe say that. So it's like you got paired up pieces being braided as a 16 strand. Uh, and because of this, I r removed them as doubles for the taper, but I would maybe, I would actually absolutely recommend in the future uh, only removing half strands and then removing 50% of the, co of the cover strands in your taper up to the end. Quick observation on this is that uh, the reason that you would splice it like this is to achieve stability. That's why the cover is incorporated. It kind of acts as a fid to contain all of the cores and pull them back through. Um, the cover does not serve any load bearing purpose. In this situation it's truly just acting as a fid and then in the eye to protect the cores. Uh, it's a Kern mantle rope so it gets it's supposed to get all of its strength in theory from the core. That's why uh, in the past I've seen a Cheryl tree rope where what they did is they uh, say this was the end kind of the end of the rope. They like cut off a bunch of cover and then just took all of the core and back spliced it through. So kind of the same concept as a 16 strand where you're just taking the load bearing part and placing it back in, but because it's just a bunch of parallel cores, that's kind of unstable. They had like some cover over it and then the cover was just placed against here and then just whip locked on to kind of hold everything together. But as soon as that whip locking broke, it was uh, um, it was rough. There was too much. There was too much being asked of the whip locking, and it was just gonna kind of pull out eventually. In my uh, opinion, that's what I thought. But because it's spliced like this now, I did draw this basically to scale. The only part that's not to scale. So we kind of have the scales down here where I was kind of figuring everything out. The only thing that's not to scale down here is that there's actually between this last tapered core piece and this last core piece that comes back into the back splice, there's actually supposed to be two centimeters separating those two. Now, uh, I don't know if you're also finding that this is a bit off, but uh, let's think about this real quick. So obviously you have to take out some core to make space for the, uh, the cover to go through and taper off smoothly because the cover does op occupy space. The cover was not originally in the core, so there has to be some space made for it to be allowed through. So fine, maybe you need to cut a couple core strands and the cover will sort of do the same job that they did. So maybe like two, blah, 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 whatever. But otherwise, these should be like overlapping. You can see they are not at all. Like, like look at this, look at this. It's like all of this needs to be like shifted over here so that they're actually overlapping. That's why it's breaking at 65 or, um, what 60 or less percent of its strength is because this overlap is just not happening at all. So I drew this to scale using all their measurements. There is something to be said for the fact that when you stuff all this stuff back through the rope, the lengths are going to shrink, but 
very minutely like still obviously this taper is not overlapping this taper very much at all i think when i've done this splice i've occasionally seen like one core strand coming out at mark d but there's uh six centimeters in between these so for a section that's like a 12 centimeter uh taper or crossover area if i only see one core coming out that means that at best there's only one other core overlapping there which means if those are applying friction in the in the splice when it's being pulled that means that maybe we have the strength of say six cores at best the four that are going this way and then kind of overlapping and sitting on the taper in here so it kind of makes sense why this is failing at like 60 percent because this taper isn't overlapping enough for uh it to do its job and for this splice to be strong going forward the way i'm going to try to do this so i got some new uh pieces of rope some new uh mercury and some new htp to do a new splice on to see if i can get a better uh rating with a slightly different splicing formula so the reason i'm doing this whole paper thing is i didn't like my explanation when i was editing this video and i have already done another one of these splices to kind of make it a little bit better so uh here let me show you well this was the failed example this was my first attempt it didn't turn out great so i did another one but uh you can see this one's super stiff and i had some ideas that didn't quite work out but this is one of the ideas i actually did do now there are some things that when i look back through this i realize there's some issues but i still think it's gonna be a lot stronger so this is also drawn to scale and uh just to kind of point out what's going on here i did not draw all of the cores in the original standing part of the rope because uh this is just uh, i was gonna have to draw nine here you can see i did the nine I actually showed all the nine in the back splice but so this is the, your standing end of the rope over here comes in goes into the eye this is the core that's being or the cover that's being reinserted with the tapered core inside of it so you'll see on this drawing i drew it in a way that makes a little bit more anatomical sense oh maybe i didn't nope i didn't because technically this these steps would actually be on this side uh of the rope just because you have to pull out the cores on the opposite side of where the cover is going to run on the way back but you can see i wanted to close this gap to make it stronger you can see in this taper the taper is not overlapping like at all so technically this should feel like soft here and then like bigger here that's not quite how it feels but whatever going back to this so we have the eye that forms i did change the ratios a little bit to begin with so this is uh an exact like drawing for what it looks like inside the mercury splice that i did that's why there's so many cores mercury has 17 cores so uh you can see here uh, I changed it so instead of taking 55% out at the crossover, I took 45% uh, out and left 55% in. So that was the first thing I changed. The other thing I changed is I pulled the cores out for the crossover at two different spots. I did it at the initial one that they give you, so I brought out four there because I'm, I'm since it's 17, I'm taking out 45% at the crossover or crossovers the way I did it. Uh, I took out four at the original Mark C they made, and then I made a Mark E that was uh, 12 centimeters down more towards the eye uh, from C, and I pulled out four uh, cores there. And then at the end, you know, I tapered them, got them sucked back in. I realized when I was counting these that because I didn't think this through in my method, this fourth one that I pulled out at C that I cut off at 12 uh, millimeters in was going to overlap with the one that I left long. I mean, they won't exactly overlap, but they're definitely going to be close. So that's not the most continuous taper since you have that double in the middle. But anyways, so there's nine cores left in. They go around. I taper the cover aggressively, 50% uh, half strands, which didn't go super well on mercury but it's fine blah 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 uh, so we have the nine cores coming back the way i did this to try to get it to overlap more but i think i still didn't do perfectly was i went 10 millimeters in or am i saying this right no they are centimeters centimeters so i went 10 centimeters up from mark a 
and then started my core extraction. But um, what I did was starting from 10 centimeters, I did one every three centimeters. So this is a really long uh, taper. And that causes it to almost overlap all the way. You can see there's a little discontinuity here. But that's honestly probably a good thing so that there's some space allowed here for the uh, cover because you're going to have to not lap these up exactly because the cover is going to occupy some space that's not really illustrated here. That's going to take up the space. I should have like weighed them to see how much they take up. I would guess they take up the same amount of space in this rope as like two, two cores something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe 5%, 10% of the cores. But you can see this over, like, actually overlaps, unlike the adrenal line splice, which didn't overlap at all. And I think just by having 55% here in the eye and then having some of this overlap so that there can be some standing friction between these cores so that it's almost as if they were continuous, not completely, but more like it, I think that means that this splice is going to be a lot stronger. And uh, this time I actually bought them in 10 foot lengths, so I'll actually get a more <laughs> accurate uh, breaking rating. But yeah, this was super fun. I was, I was, it was super exciting to break this stuff at ARP session. So yeah, if you haven't seen that video, check that video out. But uh, yeah, please uh, like and subscribe if you learn anything from this video. And yeah, keep uh, stay tuned in, and I'll uh, have those splices on the. Ooh, I'll show you the no new stuff. So this time instead I have some uh, 11 mil HTP since that's what we would work off of. You're not going to work off a of 10 mil. And then I have some blue Samson Mercury. I was like, I know I got to break it anyways, but I was like, well, we'll see some see some fun colors. I actually really like this orange. I'm a huge fan. But yes, we'll get these spliced up, send these in, have these break tested, and let's see if we're able to come up with a better formula. Aiming for that 95% MVS, baby. Yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.